In this video, we're going to look at another resonance encapsulation type system. Uh, it involves the azide anion, which is rather a strange molecule. We're going to try to explain it as best we can. We have three nitrogens. So we know there has to be at least a bond between them. And then one of the nitrogens has an excess of electrons. We'll say it's this one here. It's, it's one of the N1s that has the excess of electrons. And all of these, we believe, are sp hybridized, but in different ways. Let's look at the middle nitrogen first. This is the orbital block diagram for nitrogen, as you've seen many times now from the previous videos. And this S electron will hybridize, or this S orbital, but we believe that what happens first is that the electron gets promoted, one of the S electrons is promoted up to the P orbital. An electron promotion to give us this. Of course, that takes energy, but any resulting bonds that can form as a result of this maneuver will more than make up for the energy that it takes to promote an electron from the s orbital to the p orbital and then hybridize one s orbital and one p orbital to give two equivalent to energy equivalent sp orbitals here are the sp orbitals that result and there are two left over unhybridized p orbitals one already containing a pair of electrons and remember these orbitals are 180 degrees apart so for the central nitrogen an sp orbital and an sp orbital and then for the moment anyway, a lone pair of pi electrons and a single pi electron as well. We'll deal with that in a moment. Now let's consider the nitrogen that has the negative charge. So that right, the block diagram for that is this. There is nitrogen with an extra electron with that negative charge. Now for this, these hybridize again to give sp hybridization. So we have two molecular sp orbitals. and then two unhybridized p orbitals. And remember, here we have a, these are the unhybridized p orbitals, a lone pair of pi electrons, and a single a p orbital with a single pi pi electron. Remember this one also had a p orbital with a single pi electron so these can form a double pi bond like this and this nitrogen also has an unshared pair of sp electrons. Now for this nitrogen so this one had an sp orbital here and an sp orbital here. These sp orbitals overlap to form this bond. This had a single p electron, p orbital electron, as did this one. They form the pi bond and each of these has a 
lone pair of pi electrons. This will not remain for this one. This is like an intermediate structure. We now have to work with this nitrogen atom. So its block diagram is S pair of electrons and the three P electrons. It's going to have an SP hybridization, but before it does, what can happen is this. The 2S orbital. And then these P electrons will share a single orbital together, leaving an empty P orbital. Now this is not the most energetically favorable con configuration for nitrogen, but what we can happen is that we can have a bond forming in here and as a result of that, it will more than compensate for this less than favorable um, configuration here. So for the nitrogen on this side, it has sp hybridization. to form two sp molecular orbitals. That's what these are. And then it has the unhybridized p orbitals, a lone pair, and an empty p orbital. Now remember, this had two sp orbitals. One was used to form this bond. Now, this has an sp electron. Our middle one, remember, had two sp orbitals, an electron in each one. And now this one will overlap with this nitrogen with its lone sp electron to form this single bond. And there is a lone pair of sp electrons here, a lone pair of pi electrons here. and an empty p orbital. So what can happen is these electrons come down to fill that empty p orbital. So we're going to see then a double bond here. And the molecule looks like this. This had an empty p orbital. These, this bond is a result of this nitrogen donating both, both electrons, the electron pair. So this has a negative charge. And this has a positive charge. And this already had a lone pair of pi electrons. So the azide ion looks like this. A negative charge on each end and a positive charge in the middle. Very strange. What helps stabilize it is that at each end of the molecule there are these sp electrons. We have these pi bonds here throughout, and then it is capped on each end by unshared pair of sp electrons. So we have nitrogen, the central one, and then the 
the central nitrogen with p orbitals, single bond here, then overlapping, overlapping, to form the pi bond here. And same thing happens here, nitrogen, p orbital, p orbital overlapping. So we have these overlapping p orbitals. Then we also have these sp electrons at each end, these lone pairs. That's the encapsulation effect. So this encapsulation sort of helps to stabilize this strange azide anion. We said it had a negative charge, and it still does, because we have a positive and two negatives here. Um, with this strange azide anion that has encapsulation at each end, we can also write out resonant structures for it. We can get all these together here. OK. Here's what we had drawn originally. Now imagine that here we have this pi bond. Each nitrogen is contributing an electron for it. Suppose this nitrogen keeps both of those electrons. So this already has a lone pair of pi electrons. It's going to keep both of these. So now it's going to have two lone pair of pi electrons. We draw it here. These are the pi electrons. Those are the sp electrons. It already has a negative charge. It swiped an electron from this nitrogen. So now it's going to have a charge of minus 2. But now this one, this is a lone pair of pi electrons. These can come in then to form the bond with this one that had an electron swiped. So we have this triple bond. Now here in our original molecule, this too has a negative charge right here. But then it donated this electron pair to form this triple bond, so this no longer has a negative charge. The one in the middle still has a positive charge. It had this pi bond, lost all the electrons, but then these two electrons came in to replace them. So the molecule has this resonance structure. Plus here and a minus 2 on this nitrogen. Or what could happen is that here we have this pi bond. This nitrogen keeps both of the pi electrons to give it a negative 2 charge. It still has the sp electrons. It had a lone pair of pi electrons. It steals these. So now this has a double lone pair of pi electrons with a negative 2 charge. But this one has a lone pair of pi electrons. So these come in here now to form the bond with the middle nitrogen in this triple bond. This had a negative charge. This is now is donating the electron pair to form that triple bond. So this now has no negative charge. And notice that these canonical forms are symmetrical between here and here. So this is what the um, and the azide anion looks like, but again we have sp electrons here and here, sp electrons at this end and this end. It has this very strange resonant structure, but again it has encapsulation at both ends, and that encapsulation helps to stabilize this very strange structure. And in fact, the azide anion is a fairly stable anion, and undoubtedly encapsulation helps to achieve that. OK, that's it for this video. Again, it's a very strange system, but it is an, an interesting one. Um, again, a reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org.